Okay, as always, this is part of a series. There should be an annotation on the screen to the full playlist. I recommend watching the previous stuff because we're building off stuff we've already learned and written. Um, so I have this basic script here, and uh, it's just displaying a cube that does nothing. Nothing happens when I click or move the mouse or drag or anything like that. Uh, and today we're going to do a very, very, very simple interaction with our scene is that when we click anywhere on the scene, this cube is going to rotate a little bit. And we're going to get into more smooth and fluid rotations and animations uh, in coming weeks, as well as doing certain things when you click on certain objects. But today, click anywhere on our scene, the cube's going to rotate a little bit. So, create this HTML file called... Uh, click cube HTML and uh, all the scripts I'm creating for this series sh will be up on my site there should be a, a link in the description of this video that will bring you to all those let's go into here and have a look at our code okay starts off we have our HTML tag we have our header tag our head tag and we got our style and our CSS basically just getting rid of the white border around our body since our scene is going to be in the body again this is all stuff we've gone over in previous tutorials Inside our body, we're calling the 3JS minimal uh, script here. And then we're creating our own script. We're going to create some things, uh, camera, renderer, a scene. We're going to call our initial function, which is right here. What happens inside that function? Well, we create the renderer, or at least we assign it. We create it up here. We assign it saying that this is an object. It's a new object from our 3JS uh, library. It is a WebGL renderer in this particular case. There are other types of renderers depending on uh, exactly what you're going for. Uh, that renderer, well, we're going to set it to its size to be the width, the interior width and interior height of our window, meaning it's going to be the full screen in this case. It doesn't have to be, but we're, since we're doing that with our tutorials here, we're, we're going for full screen stuff here, full window stuff at least. Uh, and here we're going to take our document, which is our HTML page that we're looking at right now, and we're going to take its body, and we're going to add to it the renderer we just created. Then we're going to create a camera, or assign the camera. We're going to say it's a new from the 3JS library. It's a perspective camera. We gave it its parameters right here, some positioning. And then we're going to create a scene. We're going to create a cube, give it the color of blue with a, a Lambert material. Uh, it's a oblong, it's not a perfect uh, squared off cube, one side's longer, twice as long. We also have a light that we add to the scene here. We also are adding the cube here. We could have added that up here, all depending on how you like to organize stuff. Um, we also have it set to when the window changes size, when it's resized, we're going to resize our view, which is this function here. We've gone over that, we've gone over all this in previous tutorials. And then we're going to render the screen once. At this point, uh, we also have a render function that will use our renderer that we created, and we're telling it to render this particular scene using this particular camera. Okay, enough of the review. Let's dive right into what we're going to do today. We're going to create a new function. I'll put it right here. It's going to say, well, it's a function. It will be on uh, document mouse down so when the mouse button goes down this is going to happen what is going to happen well at this point we're going to call well you know I was going to just to keep things organized I'm going to do it the way I was planning on doing it we could put the animation right in here but maybe you want to have multiple functions or different things happen. We're, we're going to have it called. All it's going to do is call the animate function that we're about to create. So technically, we can put what we're going to put in the animate function inside this function uh, in this particular case. Then again, as your script grows, it's good to organize things. You might want to have different functions happen when you click based on different scenarios um, and variables and whatnot. So I'm going to break it up. I'm going to create a function animate. And inside this animate function, we're just going to find our cube, and we're going to set its rotation uh, on the y-axis in this case. 
And we're not going to set it to a particular value. We're going to add to what it already equals. So we're going to say plus equals, and we'll say 500. So we'll move it 500 degrees of rotate. Well, not necessarily degrees, but units of rotation. Um, and then we're going to render it. If we don't render it, it will move it, but we will never actually see that render happen. Um, because we need to render after we take it. Just like if you, like I said in the past, if you've done type of video game programming in the past, especially something like Pi game, you have to redraw the screen. Well, when you're rendering, you're redrawing the screen. So we make the change, then we redraw the screen. And that's what we're doing there. Now we've created these two functions. We need to call those functions somewhere. So I'm going to come up here to our initial function, and I'm going to say document, which is our web page. So we're going to add an event listener and and now we're going to say well on our web page so our document is our web page we're going to listen where are we going to listen for we're going to listen for the mouse down so anywhere in our document if the mouse is clicked we're going to say called our function that we created down there that we called my document or not my document, on document mouse down. And again, you can call that function whatever you want. That's kind of long. Um, a lot of the example stuff, write things out like that. When I'm writing code for myself, I tend to abbreviate a whole lot. I probably would just say mouse down or even s something shorter because I like to keep things short. But for tutorial use, just to clarify what it is, I'm going to do that. False, we're not going to expect anything back from that function. We're going to write that, and if I wrote everything properly, going to refresh our page here, and at first, everything looks the same. We've got our cube. It's not moving, but if I click anywhere on our page, every time I click, it rotates 500 units. Again, I've showed you in the past, if you want to go a certain number of degrees, how you use pi divided by 180, then multiply it by the number. And in fact, let's, let's, let's do that if I can remember correctly. We'll say 45 times, I think it's math, is it dot pi? Ah, see I shouldn't be trying to do stuff on the fly times, or is it plus 180? Ah, see I should, that's not right at all. Let me, let me check my notes from previous tutorials here. I'll just go to my scripts page, HTML5, 3JS. So these are the scripts we've created already f in tutorials. We got uh, rotate cube. That'll probably be it. Let's look at this. How close was I? Oh no, that one's not going a certain number of degrees. Let's try another one. Anyone remember what tutorial it was I did that in? Uh, sphere, cylinder, camera rotate maybe here we go oh I was actually pretty close we've got to divide and it's capital PI so going back to my code here I was actually really close it's divide PI so we're taking pi three point blah 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 divided by 180 and then multiply it by the number of degrees we want to go so each time that happens we are going to uh, do, 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 go back to here refresh this so that should be 45 degrees each time, which it is because I click it twice and it's turned 90 degrees. So let's go back here and lower this number down. Let's say we want it to go 5 degrees every time I click. Much smaller of a number. We'll refresh. Click, 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 click. So that is clicking anywhere on our document, causing the cube to rotate. And if we had more than one cube, in this particular case, uh, we would be able to rotate multiple things because because we're, we're not clicking on the cube, so we're just saying do all this, whatever is inside this function, which is in this case calling this function. So basically, doing whatever is inside those two functions, and render function, <laughs> um, all anytime you click anywhere. So it might seem a little funny that we have this function that all it's doing is calling this function. This function does one thing and then just calls this function. This function is only doing one thing. 
Really, we could have shortened this up a lot for this particular example. But as your code gets bigger, you want things broken down like that because these will start to have more things inside each one. Um, but that is it for this tutorial. Again, just like all the other scripts from this tutorial, they're all here at my website. There should be a link to this in the description of the video. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new ones. I post a new one every Friday on the topic of uh, HTML5 and uh, 3D stuff for the coming weeks. There should be an annotation on the screen to the full playlist. If you get to a point in the playlist where you can't access the next video, it's because I haven't published it yet. Wait a week and there will be a new one next Friday until I finish the series. Um, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. If you like these tutorials, be sure to click the like button so I know that you're enjoying them. I know this one was a little simple, um, but we're going to get into a lot more complex or at least fancy looking animations here in the next couple of weeks. And I just wanted to give you some sort of interaction with that to start off. Be sure to visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. There should be a link in the description. Go in there. You can search through my videos and playlists. And also, you contact me through my IRC channel, which you can find a link to in the description of this video or on my website under social networking. I hope that you have a great day.